Uh, I think it's a pretty good plan. We should be able to pull it off this time. Uh, what do you think, Abdul? Can you give me a number crunch real quick? Uh, yeah, give me a sec. I'm coming up with 32.33, uh, repeating, of course, percentage of survival. Oh, that's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, Alright, thumbs up. Ready, guys, Let's or? do this. Leroy Dragon! Oh my god, he just ran in. Save him! Oh jeez, stick to the plane! Oh jeez. Go. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> stick to the plane, Shove. Stick to the plane. Oh gee, oh. Give me my intervention. Hurry up. Shout out. I can't oh. cast. I can't move. Am I lagging, guys? I can't, I can't move. move. What the, what the hell? Alright, what is up guys? We're out here, we made it. The goal today is to catch some lings, cabs, and crabs out here with June and Adam. Finally, the three of us are on kayaks on the ocean together. So the swell's a little up, but the launch was doable because, because one thing to keep in mind isn't necessarily how much water is coming in, it's when that water is coming in, which is important because you could have a lot of energy coming out, but if it's spaced out, the waves are spread out, and the swell isn't too bad to maintain. And uh, you know, more importantly, the launch is doable. I made it out alive. Adam, you're alive. Yeah. June's alive, so it's definitely doable. So looking for a flat spot. We know where the structure is. So we're looking for crabs, wings, and calves. You guys ready to do this? I'm born to do this. <laughs> born to do this. Born to do this, he said. All right, so we're over a somewhat sandy area, and that's where you want to be when it comes to Dungeness crabs. They're the ones that like to filter the sand. Rock crabs, if you're by a reef, that's where you're going to run into mostly. So if you're kind of at the foot of a reef, maybe like 100 yards out, and there's a lot of sand, and that's what I'm finally seeing. It took a little bit to find some sand, but that's what I'm seeing, and that's hopefully where the Dungeness crabs are, and uh, hopefully they're hungry. We've had some crazy swells recently, and uh, hopefully they've been pinned down, but now they're on the move that it's calmed down and willing to feed. We'll find out. All right, but we're winning. I like to keep contact with the pot. Make sure that it lands flat. You want to make sure that it has a nice kind of contact with the bottom. Oh, we're at 50 feet now, actually, so we, we moved quite a ways. You're like a, you got a copy. All right, once you've hit bottom, yeah, let, maybe lift it once or twice, just to make sure it yeah, sits it nice and flat. And there we go. Just make sure that you mark your spot so you have a point of reference to come back to when you're ready to haul your pot up and see if you've caught anything. So we're going to go fishing for a little bit. Uh, maybe like two, three hours, and then come back and see if we have any Dungeness crabs for dinner. Ooh, finally. All right, first fish of the day. Nice little blue rock fish. Got one. Oh, decent. Now that we've got, it's pretty big, but now that we've got some live bait on board, I, def I definitely want to transition over to live bait setup. I'm kind of lazy, I don't want to have to tie a fish finder rig, so what I'm going to do is tie the um, everything to, here we go, tactical angler's clip. So these things are great, super versatile. You just slip it on, it's almost like a big, super strong paper clip. It makes it really easy to tie um, your pre-tied rigs on. We're gonna take our leader loop right here and we're gonna slip it on directly to our tactical angler's clip, okay? And we're gonna have it like that, like so. Gotta run, what you brung? Okay. I don't wanna kill this guy, I wanna keep him lively because it's that live action that drives the lings crazy. And if there's a big ling down there, which I hope there is, we're in the winter season months, so. They are coming in. I definitely want to give my 
myself a chance to get one. So just gonna go through the lip here. I know a lot of guys like to go through the nostrils. Um, we'll just go through the lip here. And you know, big lings, small lings, they all hit um, live bait pretty, pretty aggressively. So I wouldn't be surprised if a little ling um, that's, you know, keeper size tries to hit this guy. There it is, pretty simple. Got the stinger on the bottom. And we're just gonna set this guy free, let him swim around down there, and hopefully turn this guy into a lingcot. Alright, I have a theory. This is my theory. My theory is as winter approaches, we all know that bigger lingcod come in, bigger fish tend to come in uh, shallower to spawn, right? But we're over such a massive reef that I've been fishing the, you know, coast side, the interior of the reef, not the outside that faces the deeper water. So I'm thinking maybe if I send my presentation down to the outer reef, right, the outer edges where it's kind of the first pit stop for these migratory or you know pregnant wings or spawning wings that are coming closer to the uh, near shore reefs I have a chance at you know getting my presentation down to them first right maybe I'm gonna catch them uh, you know the ones that decided to house up and set up shop on a rock that's closer to deeper water so I'm slowly making my way there no action behind me near shore on the inside of the reef so let's work the outside of the reef and see that if that produces a link cut. it out of his I think he was hanging on oh wait he might be there oh he's back he's back he's back he's back got it yeah well he's he's I think he's hitchhiking Yeah, got him. Oh, I didn't even right. fight. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think he's hooked. Oh yeah, see, he was just hanging on. Woohoo! Nice. Yeah. It's a lake. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's legal. Gotta do it for you, Moo. Just like we hoped, we went to the outer edge of the reef there, and sure enough, this guy wasn't even hooked. He was hanging on to my rather large blue, and then he let go, and I knew that he was gonna be probably like small to medium size, which is what this guy is. This guy's probably like 26, something like that, 27. I sent the blue back down, felt the weight, knew that he was probably just hanging on, and reeled him just to subsurface. Once they break into the air, they freak out, they let go and they swim down. So I got the net under him and he broke and uh, went right into the net. So I'm gonna keep this guy, flay him up, give him to my mom and dad for uh, post Thanksgiving dinner. So that's how it's done guys, on the board. Shout out to G Fishing Rods. Do this Aries rod. I love the action of it. I knew it was gonna good, be a good live bait rod because it has that feeling of fiberglass without the weight of fiberglass. And it just felt real good when I got that bend and that weight on. And uh, if you want something hard and you know kind of butterfly action, you're gonna go and look at the Apollo. But if you want a little more versatility, I think, and a little more kind of flickability for swim baits and live action stuff, this uh, Aries rod right here, one piece, seven foot four. I'm told it's made out of pure carbon fiber, although it feels like a fiberglass uh, rod, and it has the weight of a, of a carbon rod though, so 
feels really good. Uh, 200 size Osea. This is the 201 HG again. JDM reel that I bought uh, directly from Japan. And there's something about a Japanese made Shimano that feels like it's unreal. <laughs> it's a reel that feels unreal. So definitely felt real good coming up. Bang on the board. Really excited to see if we have anything in our pot. We're in about 50 foot of water right now. So let's see if there's anything in our special CC pea pot. I'm always nervous. It's a lot of work to get these crab pots out here. I'm always like a little nervous, like butterflies in my stomach, almost like a first date. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, let's see. Oh, please be one Dungeness Keeper in there at least. It would have made it worth it. Whoa! Check this! <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Alright. This is when you know when you drop too close to a, a wreath. <laughs> that is not... That is not a Dungeness Crab. <laughs> That's a nice brown rockfish. Maybe even a copper. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Dang it. No Dungeness. All right. Here's a pretty decent brown rockfish. Might be even a copper. I'm not really sure, but because it's not a legal take, I gotta let them go. I know it hurts some people to watch it go, but that's the rule. If you don't catch a fish that's willing to take uh, uh, your presentation by line and hook, you gotta let them go. See you next time on the end of my rod, hopefully. Dang. Some Constellation rock crabs. Don't even want to mess with rock crabs, so we're gonna let these guys go too. Peace. At least I have chicken. I lean left. Whoop. Go, 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 go. Ayy, uh oh. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Ayy, oh, no. No. Oh, no, June. All right, Kayo. Putanga na mofo. Ah, live and learn. Baptize, bro. Next time.